is happening. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So in this video, this video is probably going to be split into two videos, but it's going to be filmed in one day. One of the videos is definitely going to be the intercooler install. But today, there is a local car cruise. So I'm going to that. And then I'll install the inner cooler after the event. So right now I'm kind of just bringing the car to the shop so I can bring the inner cooler here so I can just go straight here after the event and start getting at it with the inner cooler. But for right now I didn't. For right now we're just doing a inspection, make sure nothing. I don't know, like a CB axle coming off, or something like that, something more severe. Just making sure the 7 is in good operating condition before we go take it out. If not, then we're going to be over here installing the intercooler, but I highly doubt something is going to be wrong with the 7, so, but, you know, it's a good little peace of mind type of thing. So the car cruise is approximately starting or starting to meet in eight minutes so that's great but good thing the meeting location for the car cruise is about the next exit away so it's close enough but we're not supposed to leave or they're not supposed to leave until 9 45 and it's eight minutes to nine right now so and we're just doing a basic inspection on the seven Now I'll like, bring you guys along on what I usually look for when I'm down here. So for these cars, mainly a coolant right in between the transmission and the engine. That because that signifies your thermostat and water pump assembly. I don't know if you can see that, but it's dry for the most part. Uh, any ball joints, I just replaced those recently. CV axles on either boots if it's leaking. Uh, don't mind about the like wetness on the oil pan. That's just sweating a little bit. But anything out of the ordinary. So nothing here. Don't look like anything's loose on the downpipe. So, nothing in there. So, yeah, just performing a basic, basic uh, inspection underneath the car. Shocks are still good. Installed those springs. Uh, yeah, it looks like everything's good. Nothing leaking. So, we should be fine on the cruise. I'm gonna see if I can get some gas before. This is a very, very basic inspection. See if there's anything concerning before I leave. I don't wanna be that guy, but that gets stuck in the middle of a car cruise, because I've been that guy the one time with my Mark IV. It wasn't fun, I'll tell you. So, inspection all done. So now, we are gonna head out, or before we head out, we gotta close the shop, of course. Can't leave it open. Bring the 911 and the Macan back into the shop so they're nice and safe in here. Uh, go get some gas and go, go to the car cruise. Close the garage. Now we just go grab the keys, or I think I already have the keys, yeah, I have the keys already. Okay, inner cooler's on there, two portions here, all good. Now we just lock up the front door, go get some gas, and go to the uh, rendezvous. Wait. I'll see you guys when I get there. 
I don't really know how well the audio is because of the fan. Because I'm using a fan to pull down the Mark 7. Because I just came back from a cruise. But we're going to get started installing the integrated engineering uh, intercooler on this bad boy. And I'll be following both uh, IE's instructions on how to do it and uh, Humble Mechanic's video because he, has, he did a video on his Mark 7.5 doing the same exact intercooler. His is slightly different because his is an R and this one's only a GTI. So, but it should be very similar. So, let's get started there. Taking off the grill, and since I don't have the driver assist package, there's no sensor back here in the emblem, which is fantastic. It means I don't have to deal with any electrical whatsoever. Next step will be uh, taking out the fender liner over here, and since we got that tight fitment, there's no room really to finagle with it so we're gonna put it on the lift lift it up a little bit fender liner bolts removed not all of them the one that just connects to the front bumper just using the two rolly chairs to support the front bumper so it doesn't come crashing down because right now I don't have access to the wiring harness for the fog lights, so I kind of need something to hold it. I got the fog lights disconnected, so the bumper should be free. So next is the intake system. The intake, it there. This intake hasn't been off for a while. Intake off on mine. There's these two grommets. One right here and one right there. The grommets just didn't want to come off so I'll deal with that later. But make sure you take off your secondary air intake. And there's a big little evap thing on there. Make sure you take those off. Okay, next step is draining the coolant. I can tell the car's a little warm still from the cruise. So I'm gonna let it sit there for 15, 20 minutes, give or take. Because the last thing I wanna do right now is get burnt and get second degree burn from a hot coolant. So I'm just gonna let the seven just chill for a second or we can do other things. If you are doing this, make sure you t you are very careful with these plastics. These, pla these plastics can be brittle when they age, especially on mine. So I just got the connector for the fan removed. We're still waiting on the car to cool down a little bit. Or we can drain the coolant. So I'm just going to start doing other or ne the next steps which is taking the fan out so we're at that I'll see you guys when I get the fan out so I just took the belly pan off since while we're waiting for the coolant to dry off where I just took the belly pan right there and we're gonna take the boost pipes right there and right here. That will help us aid taking the fans off since we still can't uh, still can't drain the coolant because it's still hot. So let's go do that. Thing was on there. 
put some dielectric grease when we install it back. So the quick connects for the passenger side for the lower radiator hose uh, isn't uh, quick connecting. I know, ironic, because they call it quick connects. Uh, they're quickly connecting, uh, but they're difficult disconnects. So we're just gonna uh, take the ra lower radiator hose elsewhere. So there's another hose that comes out of the union. So we're just gonna take it off from there. So this union over there, that one right there isn't quickly disconnecting. So we're just gonna take it out from this lower hose right here. So I just took the spring clamp out. So we're just gonna take it off from there. So because they're only quick connecting but they're difficult disconnects. So let's try and not get a big old bath of coolant. Go. Coolant is draining. Let's try and clean up a little bit because we made a mess. And I don't really want this to be an ice skating ring. So, especially when we're about to put the new intercooler in because that is heavy. Compared to stock, I believe the IE intercooler is like 30 pounds. So, that's about double. We're gonna disconnect the upper radiator hose now hopefully this quick disconnect up here is actually quickly disconnected okay yeah same thing with this one uh, the quick connects uh, doesn't want to quickly disconnect so we're gonna take off this instead this one because quick connects is only quick connecting so, yeah, we're just going to take it off this, take off the spring clamp, and then walk this hose out. Okay, upper radiator hose is disconnected also. So, I just took off the mounts for the fan that mounts it directly into the radiator. So now we have to take out the bottom ones. There we go. And remove. My first time seeing these. Well, first time for me that I had to take it off anyway. Seems like a pretty good unit. It just directs air into the thing so it doesn't go to the side over here. So we have to take this one and this one. Through that, there's like a clip down there. I don't know if you can see it, but you just have to push that down and it comes off. There's one there. There's, okay, this one's broken, and then there's one right there. Same thing with the other side, there's one here. Oh, I just sat on my belly pan, and those two are broken, so on this side, for me, the place is just there. One on this side, and two on this side. And we're just gonna use like a flat blade screwdriver. After about one bleeding hand and uh, a lot of struggling, we got the intercooler and the radiator out together because I couldn't disconnect the uh, the little tab that attached to the intercooler for the radiator, so I couldn't take it out at all. So I just made the decision of taking both at the same time through the bottom, uh, and now. The condenser is just right there, just chilling on the chair, supported, so no worries there. And finally, 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 we get to put the new intercooler, or we get to start at least. But we gotta disconnect the radiator from the old intercooler first, and then, yeah. So we get our new charge cooler from IE and here let's see the difference is quite a lot a 
Look at that. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I don't know about you, but that's a pretty big difference. That is a big difference on that inner cooler. Though I should have, I kind of should have uh, taken some data logs of the intake air temperature when I was cruising with the stock one. Well, now we can't do that anymore, so it's whatever. We'll feel it when we drive the car. So, time to get the new intercooler into the car. So, I'm buttoning everything back up. Everything is bolted to the intercooler, and it is significantly thicker. Way thicker than what it was before. Uh, it's so thick that I doubt that we'll have some clearance issues with our fan but we will see our radiator is kind of meh so yeah so right now I'm just trying to put some cold lines back in like the ones connect to the radiator so yeah so the system can bleed and yeah I'll put you guys down so I can use both of my hands and actually get done here now we're gonna fill the cooling system so it bleeds while we assemble this fine German engineering and so we can actually check on this camera is about to die. I don't have a battery, unfortunately, so I'll just see you guys when I get done with it. Okay, so we're at our stop right now to just kind of explain the difference is, at least for me. I mean, I mean, I've been driving this car for almost a year, if anything, a year now. So I kind of like those minor differences. I can actually tell. So. On this one, when I uh, installed it, the nose of the car felt heavier. Like, not significant, not significant, but it's definitely enough to like feel it, but yeah. And then when I did a few pulls, not full boost, not the whole 29 pounds of boost that this car can do, but not full boost, but nearly at like about 17 20 so not pushing it but still enough enough boost but i felt the I'm, i've done multiple pulls in this car on the stock in the cooler so i can definitely feel if there's a difference because uh, before i did the inner cooler on this car after about one pull you can feel the car like like that tired uh, fatigue feeling I, it's it's like really hard to explain it for me like it's really hard to put it into words but that's the only like words I guess that I can put it is but like the car uh, doesn't feel like tired anymore after one pull because I did about two four two or four two, around two or four pulls about 28 pounds of boost on it and the car did not feel tired at all, uh, which is good. Which is good. You you want that feeling of the car not being tired, because uh, that's the heat soak coming in. So I think we solved our heat soak issue, which is which is perfect. That's what I wanted for this car. But yeah. So we did that yesterday. Is my tire flat? No, no, never mind. No. I thought my tire was flat, but yeah. So I can show it to you guys what it looks like now. Unfortunately, I don't have a picture of how the stock inner cooler sat into the engine bay. Unfortunately, but you 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 can YouTube it. But now the whole assembly the fan radiator intercooler and condenser assembly 
is pushed back, I don't know, another half an inch to a quarter inch back, which is, it's cutting it close. But let me see if I can show it to you guys without dropping the camera. Let me pull the flashlight too so you can see the intercooler. But, yeah. Like, as you can see, I don't know if you can, how well you can see that, but that is the lower radiator hose uh, union down there. It is very close to the rotating assembly, which is concerning but you can see the intercooler is tucked down there in the stock location but it is if you follow along over here it is very close I still need to adjust that uh, right, coolant hose right there because the last thing I want is the fan to start eating up that coolant line which is I don't want it. so there's still, there is still uh, tweaks that needs, that it needs for sure, but in my opinion, in my opinion, for what you get, it's it's been worth it so far, for sure. But we'll save that opinion later on when the intercooler has been there for a while. But so far, it's been. It's been very good. Uh, so, IE claims that you can recover from heat soak. I haven't really put that to the test yet because I don't think this car has been heat soaked yet. I tried yesterday, like last night while I was pulling the 911 and the Macan back into the shop. I just left the car running outside for like 5-10 minutes to uh, attempt to heat soak it. But it didn't work. But which is great, it's fantastic. But we need to put the uh, recovering from heat soak theory. Which I mean, I believe it. I don't doubt it. But I mean, it's ni it's nice to have a little test with it, you know. But yeah, we need to test that out because on the stock intercooler does not really heat soak recovery per se. Well, at least it doesn't feel like it. But yeah. That's the major update uh, on the intercooler, but thanks to you guys so much for watching. Uh, make sure you guys stay tuned for more stuff on the Mark 7. We are not done. We are far from done from mod modding the 7. Which, uh, I'll give you guys a little hint. It's, it's a fueling upgrade. Uh, yeah, it's a fueling upgrade. That's all the hints I can give you guys, but thank you guys so much for watching and stay tuned for more. And I'll see you guys on the next one.